with Collaborators Short on Shorts, and today I am here with Jeffrey Henderson. He is the writer, co-director, and lead actor of the short film Star Wars The Sable Corsair. Jeffrey, thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks for uh, having me. Of course. Okay, so when I saw this film, the first thing that popped into my mind was, okay, this is some sort of fan fiction, right? I grew up watching Star Wars, but this is obviously like a deviation from the original narrative. And... I realize I don't know anything about fan fiction. Like, why does someone go out and decide to produce it? What's like the business model? What's the personal reasons? And that's kind of what I wanted you to share with me today. Like, educate me about fan fiction. Well, this could be like an eight episode series. Um, well, the main thing was the, the catalyst for it was, aside from being a huge lifelong fan, that Lucasfilm announced they were doing this contest. It was a, like a short fan film contest. I think I saw something about it. It was uh, judged by J.J. Abrams and... It, and a, a couple, yeah, like yeah. Gareth Edwards, the guy yeah. that's directing Rogue One and some of the other people. And um, the deadline was really tight and the rules were actually pretty restrictive, which I thought was really cool. Um, Tell I'm, me you, the rules. It, again, it would take forever. But I thought it was really cool because I think working with less forces you to be more creative. Yeah. You, and, um, we crowdfunded part of it, which went really well, and me and my buddy Nick Finch, the guy that I did it with, right. um, he, both of us had this thing personally, we would rather lose an arm than ask for help, so it was really difficult for us, but once we did, we were really pleasantly surprised at how supportive everyone was, it was great. Um, and then the location really sold it, because we actually shot about five minutes from where they did the uh, the Sarlacc pit scene in Return of the Jedi with the thing and, and the rolling desert dunes oh, and all yeah. that. Um, so half of our budget went to permits and insurance just to be able to use the location. Wow. And um, so I think more than anything it was, I have this really, really amazingly talented group of friends and we've been talking about having an excuse to work together for a long time. Mm -hmm. And when I, I heard about the contest and I had an idea that I thought would be pretty easy to adapt um, under the circumstances, and I just figured the tight deadline and the restrictive rules, it didn't give us any chance to be too precious about it. You know, we couldn't right. belabor the point, we couldn't pretend we were Kubrick or anything ridiculous, it was just, let's do something fun, we're all Star Wars geeks, and let's try to make it legit. I don't, now, I have no objectivity, I don't know if we did, but I think at least that was the goal, that's what we all wanted to do. I think you did, especially, it's funny that you mentioned the music, because when I was watching it, I thought, Hearing the sounds that come actually from the film within this fan fiction film just it unifies the pieces even more than using oh, a storyline that's similar. Yeah, thanks. I noticed that. I was wondering if it was from the actual films. Yeah, well, they had a, a huge library. Which the daunting part was, even though it's only five minutes, there's a lot of with the the deadline being so tight. We were doing so many things at once, so. I was going into the library, cross, crossing, you know, there was hundreds of tracks, so crossing those with the scenes and, and seeing what worked and what didn't. Uh -huh. And we had a guy who was amazing that helped us do sound. And he was, we were going back and forth between the sound effects, the ADR, and the music. And it was this kind of amorphous thing up until the very, very last minute when we locked off because we wanted to make sure we had, that the cues were as effective as they could be given the... I definitely control. think that it pulled it all together. Thanks. For sure. That's great. That's really yeah. nice to hear. Thanks. So will there be any more fan fiction short films in your future? Um, I don't, I honestly don't know. This, it, it, this was great. and it was, a, it was so much fun. It was a great experience. Um, but it's difficult to make that kind of investment in something that's not your own. Um, but like we've had a huge amount of uh, people ask us, if we're doing a sequel or how the story continues, that kind of stuff. Yeah. But it's really tough because, and I'm, I don't want to mischaracterize it, it's not a complaint. Um, I'm really grateful to Lucas and the whole thing because they've been wonderful. Yeah. But it's really difficult to make that big an investment in something that you don't own or that you don't have creative autonomy over because ultimately, no matter how much, how good it is or what you, they own it lock, stock, and barrel. And, um, That's what I was wondering. Like when you make fan fiction, does it become a business model or is it something that you do out of? I think the it's, love for it, well, but it's, no, it's not long term. Oh no, there's no profit. I mean, we did it very much for the love of doing it. Yeah. And honestly, part of it was to uh, to kickstart stuff professionally because it's one thing um, to talk about. You you know, you get mired down in talking about it, but no one. I wouldn't. I wanted to do it. I didn't want it. I didn't want it to be theoretical. I didn't want it to be. Oh well, one day we'll get to do this thing. Um, it gave us an excuse to do something tactile and real, and, and it was like, put up or shut up. Here's an opportunity. You want to do something? Okay, let's do something. And fortunately, everybody was really game. 
like really game. Because it's not like, oh, show up at this diner and we're going to do a little talkie scene. This was the middle of the Sahara. This it was, was the in Glamis. The desert. Glamis, yeah, right? And California. Like rolling dunes as far as the eye can see. And we had sandstorms and windstorms wow. and all kinds of disastrous stuff happened. And we had like close to 60 people show up between all the stormtroopers and all the crew. And that's a big ask for three days of those conditions for no pay. Um, and everyone was amazing. I mean, it, uh, really amazing. I'm, it's really, to this day, it's still humbling where I, I hear myself say that. I'm like, like, I wouldn't have done that for me. Were they crazy? You know, know. what are you guys, idiots? I wouldn't, yeah. what the hell are you doing here? Um, but it worked out great. And, and I think we're all really happy with it and proud of it. And, and obviously, you know, we won the um, Audience Choice Award from Lucasfilm, which was a big deal that we got to go to London and I got... Uh, me and Nick both got these stormtrooper statues. It's like an Oscar, but it's oh, a gold stormtrooper. Oh, I should have had you bring it today. Holding the camera. It's so sweet. I, I was like, I, I opened the box and it, I, I sat it in the coffee table and I just stared at it like it was, you know, I was like, oh, I didn't want to touch it. I didn't. So um, it was really great. The whole thing's been really fun. But again, there's no illusions of you know, like we've just done uh, Dr. Strangelove or anything. I mean, it's a five minute film. We're really proud of it, but yeah. I think it's more um, onward and upward. Like we're thinking, you know, what's next? What else can we do? How can we use this and parlay it into something else? And um, I look forward to the original content that you bring next time around. Be sure to me, send it to us so that we can I'll watch it. Thank you. All right. That. Jeffrey, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thanks. You can check out Star Wars The Sable Corsair by clicking on the link below. It is the audience award winner for 2016. Be sure to take some time to see what happens when this guy lands on a deserted planet.